K-I-L-R Taylor Games Gamers, simmers, and pilots, I am the Killer Gamer, and welcome to the tour around the world. Well, kind of. Uh, with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2. 2.0. And this is probably the episode that you guys have all been waiting for. And that is the use of scenery disc number 9. Now, we've already used it the past couple of flights. Uh, towards the end of the flight going to Bloomington because surprisingly the Bloomington normal uh, normal airport was not in the default scenery as it is on the Commodore 64 and the Amiga it's not there um, yeah and flight simulator 3 I, I I don't know I haven't gotten there that far yet <laughs> may not be under that one I don't know but we had to switch to scenery just number nine for that to show up and then we flew to Champaign uh, with scenery disc number nine, but Champagne is here on the default scenery. But where we're going now is out of the default area. We're going to Peoria, Illinois, and we'll go. And uh, by the way, we took a few hours and we slept, so it's five in the morning. Uh, so we should uh, start getting some sunrise here in uh, in a little bit. Uh, but I'll go ahead and pull up the map so we can go ahead and take a look at where we're going so here it is and Champagne is right down here okay so the default area is typically about this much right there that's the default area um, except for Flight Simulator 2 with Microsoft uh, this Bloomington the VOR is there but the airport's not for whatever reason uh, but anyway, we're basically fly flying uh, back in the direction of Bloomington. But we're going here, to Peoria. I hear horns honking. So there is going to be a river here. Um, hopefully the sun will be up by that time and we'll be able to see the river. And that's pretty much it. This will be a bit of a longer flight uh, because... It was like 40 miles from Bloomington to Champaign, and well, it looks like it's going to be another 40 right after that. So we got a bit of a flight here ahead of us. But uh, we'll try to make it interesting, try to have some fun. So let's go ahead and get our radio set up here. Uh, N1 is for NAV1. We're going to go ahead and set that to 115.2, which is Peoria. I don't know if that's going to come in just yet. It did. All right, there we go. 78.3 miles. V1 for our VOR1 OBS1. Nope, that was not the right key that I just hit. Plus minus. There we go. Well, there we go. It's the direction we want to go. We want to go at uh, heading at 300. We're, we're pretty much facing in a direction that we want to go. Uh, let's see. Hit D twice there to get our gyro compass uh, matched up with the magnetic one. And the comm, Aetis, not worried about champagne. Uh, for Greater Peoria, it's 126.1. And I don't think we're going to see that just yet. Yeah. Um, and I also slowed down the communication rate, so hopefully it won't be flying across the screen like it has uh, 
in some of the past videos that we've done. A for altitude. Looks like we're good there. I think we're all set. Um, we'll do a fly over uh, downtown Champaign just to see if there's uh, anything interesting there. Uh, it looks like there was something going on. Just look out our window here. Oh, oh, okay. Well, there we go. Uh, it looks like there's a building of some sort out there. Uh, probably just a box, but you know, I don't know if it represents something. Maybe it represents the the university. Um, uh, from what I understand, basically this city grew as a result of the university. Uh, I did a video on my x -Plane series. The x -Plane series is kind of like a, a tour. I, I mean, I don't mean, you know, like flying one, from one airport to the other, but uh, it's like we go into town and check out and see what's there and stuff. So it's a, it's a little unique. I try to do something different and unique with all the different simulators. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we'll simulate uh, turning the key through each stage. Uh, so M for Magneto, M2 is left, M3 is right, M4, we're at both, and M5 is start. And our engine is started. And we're going to take off from runway, it's either 31 or 32, because behind us, is this blue building and we're gonna take a look and see what that actually is uh, it's uh, I know in the Commodore 64 it's like Navistar Avastar something like that I don't think the I don't think the building is there anymore I'm just wondering if the writing is on it. I'm going to assume that it is. It's it's interesting because it, it is a blue building on the other simulators also. It may still be there in real life. I just I could have sworn when I was on the later simulators I didn't see it. But again, that's why um, we're doing all of these flights, the same flights on all the different simulators, so that way you can see stuff like that. Uh, for example, comparing uh, the, you know, the taxiways and the parking, parking spaces like where we're at right now. You know, did they try to make it you know, generally how it should be? And I think, in general, you know, they did a pre pretty decent job trying to get this to look like the Champaign Airport. You know, minus all the buildings and details, but, you know, as far as the design goes. crossing my fingers and hoping that the Peoria Airport is actually there. <laughs> Just because we got the uh, radio tuned in, that means absolutely nothing. I don't see anything written on the building yet. There may not be anything on this building this time around. It's there on the Commodore 64, I can tell you that much. It's written in white. Uh, it's, 
it's written in right kind of goes like this and it and just has uh, I think it's like Navstar Navstar or something but it doesn't look like it's on this one either that or we just need to get closer do. We've got a blue building, but that's all we got, folks. That's a bummer. See, it's strange. Um, it's like there are things with the Microsoft Flight Simulator that are definitely better than Sublogic Flight Simulator 2. The color, for one, at least there's color. You know, it's not just kind of bland looking. Um, you only get this if you, like, were to hook it up to a TV or, you know, if you're doing an emulation, this would be a composite monitor. If you don't use composite, you're not going to get the colors. You're going to get... You're going to get something ugly. <laughs> uh, look up screenshots of Flight Simulator 2 and you'll see a variety of different stuff. You'll be like... That doesn't, yeah, it's like, that doesn't look like Killer Gamer's, uh, video. What is that? I'm like, I'm not at throttle zero, but yet we're not moving very fast. Imagine if you could do with this simulator that what, what we can do a Flight Simulator 4. Meaning the recording your own air traffic. And creating an adventure that'll play back voice files to give you the sense that there's air traffic control. And you can actually set it up to actually make use of your transponder. Wouldn't this just be a really cool thing to play around with? I do that type of stuff with Flight Simulator 4. Uh, it's not featured on the World Tour with the episodes that I have at the moment because I did not pursue it at the time. I, I was learning about Flight Simulator 4 as I was flying it because um, I had never flown it before. And I was building my collection up with Flight Simulator 4 and then looking dig once I once I uh, once the world tour went on hiatus, it gave me a chance to kind of dig into it a little bit more, and discovered I can do some amazing stuff with it. So if you want to see what that those amazing things are, you're going to want to check out the Flight Simulator for Adventures, the Sublogic USA tour. It makes use of the uh, the Sublogic USA East and West Scenery Discs, or I should say Package. This is not the same as Scenery Discs 1 through 6, 7, 9, 11, and 12, and, and stuff. This is different. For one, those individual, the individual ones, you know, where they're supposed to be um, 12 Scenery Discs that cover the U.S., when I say supposed to. That means there isn't. There are sites that try to say, yep, the whole USA is covered from scenery just 1 through 12. No, it's not. <laughs> it's because scenery discs 8 and 10 are, are missing. They were never made. I challenge you to find them. You won't find them. 
I have been able to find pictures of the of the disc labels for for the scenery discs other than eight and ten. Eight and ten were never made. I didn't have them when I when I uh, had bought them for the Commodore sixty four. And heck, the Commodore 64 didn't even have Scenery Disk 12. That one came out for the PC. And it came out for the Commodore Amiga. But 8 and 10? Didn't make it on any platform. And by that time, Flight Simulator 4 was, you know... By the time that they st would have started working on it... Uh, they were working on their ATP, the Airline Transport Pilot, which looks a lot like Flight Simulator 4. Um, and then they made the USA East and West for that, and it's compatible with Flight Simulator 4. And I don't have any videos of that on the channel just yet, of ATP, but I will. I'd like to do a world tour on that. It may... there may not be much of a point of doing one, because if I... One, it's airlines. It's, it's going to be kind of difficult to to fly some of these short hops that we've been doing between airports on an airline. Uh, but also, if I started using the sublogic scenery <clears throat> east and west, it's all going to look the same as what was already done. Well, kind of. For Flight Simulator 4, I hadn't been using USA East and West yet. So this is runway 32, not 31. So the uh, sublogic map that we were looking at the last episode that was saying it was runway 31 was incorrect. The ATIS was correct. It is runway 32. slowly uh, pulling out to the runway here. But I think right here we're good. So let's go ahead and F3 our throttle. Nice and easy as it goes up. We'll use our rudder here. Stay on the runway. That's zero and plus on the numerical keypad. And up we go. Go ahead and hit G for our landing gear. Bring that up. And I'm going to go ahead and start throttling down here, so that way we can get some uh, low flight or low altitude established here, so we can take a look at the city that's over here. So let's go ahead and gonna do some nighttime IFR or VFR here. be too high up. I want to see what we got over here. There's a little something over there. You see that? No, I can't see it. A 
we were passing it, it was right over to the left. I don't know if it was a box or what that was. Hey, look, there's green. You see this? There's green. I think this is supposed to be the university campus. I think that's what this is supposed to be. You know, like there's a park or something. Looking at our radar here and zooming out. Oh, I don't see the white thing there at all. Oh, maybe it disappeared. I don't know. Got some roads. You see the roads and stuff? So yeah, there's a couple of green patches there. And once we get going uh, to Peoria, I mean, we got some time, so uh, I can pull up uh, a satellite view of Champagne, and we'll compare that to what uh, what we were seeing here. I'm pretty sure that is the university because I remember I remember the high or you know road coming up this way, and the university being on this side, this side. There's a park over on this side, so I'm curious what that is. Oh my goodness. I don't know if those buildings are in any kind of shape. This one looks like a dome or something right there. got green grass or something there. All right, let's go ahead and turn back towards Peoria. 300. We'll be off course just a tad bit, but uh, it's okay. Bring our power back up. I think that road right there in front of us, I know there's a lot of roads in front of us, I'm referring to this one right here. This one looks like it's going to head out to uh, uh, Bloomington and, uh, or maybe just, I mean look, it's pretty close to 300. I think, I'm thinking this one here is, goes out to Peoria, so. We'll go ahead and follow it in this direction get our altitude, we gotta get some altitude here. There's the buildings. Oh, look at this. I think this is like a, a freeway with an exit. Like the little exits or something. That's what that looks like. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's an interstate. That's a freeway. And these are like the little... <laughs> that's cute. That little, little exits off the freeway that take you into... the way well, you can't really see anything there but you know <laughs> okay we'll go ahead and change your heading here 
We're a little bit off from 300. Right about there, 290. That'll do it. Take a look at the altitude at Peoria. Let's see, I may have already done that. No, I didn't. 659 is the altitude. There's no ILS, at least in the scenery disk. It's not here. get us leveled off here and uh, around Okay, I'm going to go ahead and show this to you. We, we're, we're still climbing, but it's okay. Um, it's, it's a modest climb. I don't think we're going to go out of control here. So I pulled up a map, Google map of Champagne, And uh, here is the airport right here. Um, you can kind of see the taxiways and how it was kind of similar. You had the little angle there. Um, that blue building was somewhere around here, but I don't think, like I said, I don't think it's there anymore. But remember that road that we were talking about? That roadway? It was coming in through here and it was coming into town. And sure enough, the two buildings that's, that we saw on this side was the university. Um, that green patch, I think, is this right here. So I guess they got the Champagne Country Club <laughs> in there. And um, there was another piece of green grass could have been this or it could have been something like that but that that was it but then remember that interstate that we looked at here's the interstate and it had the uh had the exit there's one of them there's the other <laughs> it didn't have the clover leaf but it did have the little diamond shape maybe it had a diamond no i don't think they could do the clover leaf at that time but still that's cool. That's cool that they have that in there. And what is it? I think it's 72 that we saw, and I think that's the one we're following. And 72 kind of goes around, goes by Decatur. Oh, that goes to Springfield. That's not the direction we want to go. All right. So the 74 is what comes up here to Bloomington. Normal is north of that. And then there's Peoria. ourselves even out here I'm not sure why our th our not our speed is like 80 why is that Let's, you know what I'm gonna bring our elevator trim down and I'll throttle up. I remember that we were using the elevator trim when we were making our descent, so now I know, yeah, it, we should be centering that before takeoff, but uh, on the old simulator, it 
Unless it's wildly out of place, I don't worry about it too much. On the newest simulators, on the other hand, though, I do. Okay, we're getting our speed back up now. Champagne. So that roadway there, that one goes out to Springfield. And then this other one right over here to the left, kind of follow along on the side there. I'm not sure what that is. It's probably a small town of some sort. That's the one that we are following. This uh, should be taking us to Bloomington, and then after that it should take us to Peoria. Yeah, so that should be Interstate 74. Okay, I'm going to pull up uh, Google Maps again here, and I went into 3D mode, and this building right here, I believe is that blue building, um, it says Flight ST, this is not what it says though on Co the Commodore 64, it's like Navstar, Avastar, or something like that. I think what I might do is I might go ahead and pull that video up and we could take a look at that during our flight. But yeah, so that's this is the real Willard Airport. You know, here's that road that goes in. And on X Plane, I did a stop motion, uh, kind of like slideshow animation. It takes a bit to do that, but it gives us the illusion that we're driving down the road and going into town. <laughs> it's kind of cool. But yeah, Campus Town, University of Illinois at Urbana, Ch Champaign. That's it. This is what we saw. It was the State Farm Center. That little disc thing was the State Farm Center. Ooh. Well, that's cool. Um, I don't know what the other building was. Maybe it was this. It was another white building of some sort. But yeah, this... Make no mistake, that one that we saw is this. I've read it. This is a really good college. The University of Illinois. That um, a lot of uh, CEOs and, and very uh, very successful people have come out of this college. If I'd known about this college when I was younger, I probably would have gone, gone there myself. Have any of you gone to that college? Let me know. I'm interested. How was everything when you were there? And I think they have a job placement stuff. Of course, you know, you could be coming out of that college with hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. 
it's insane how colleges are nowadays. It makes you kind of wonder if it's really even worth it anymore. I think at one time it was, but now, um, now you're paying an insane amount of money to get an education and hoping that you get into the field that you studied to be able to pay off that debt that you just accumulated. That just sounds kind of wrong, doesn't it? You know, and then if you happen to be in the field for a little bit, but then you get laid off, well, you know, now you don't have that job and you got all this debt to pay. It it just it shouldn't be like that. It should be like the Sims. <laughs> Like The Sims 2 and The Sims 3. Uh, you go to university and uh, you, know, you are paying some money, but not an insane amount of money. And then when you get out and choose a career, you're like at the uh, uh, stage 3 or 4 of that career already. That's how it should work. It should work just like that. At this time, university hasn't come out for Sims 4 yet. Um, the Magic expansion, I believe, is out now. Um, I was reading Lazy Game Reviewer's uh, tweet on Twitter. He was saying that he thinks that the Magic expansion, or I think this is actually a game pack, is could very well be a template for the University um, expansion. Because you've got these Magic schools and you're learning spells and there's a whole new location uh, and all that could trans translate into different uh, schools of the University and, and things. And, uh, He's a smart guy, and I wouldn't be surprised if um, if he's right. So we got about 57 miles to go, and I'm willing to bet that is Bloomington right off to the uh, right there. Champagne is long gone. Dig up the Commodore 64 emulator here. Okay, I have, oh interesting, didn't I think that was going to happen. Um, so I've pulled up, when I switch out of it here, the sound's going to go off from the uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, which I'm sure you're not complaining too much because <laughs> it's not the most uh, pleasing sound, but I've got... Um, the sublogic right over down here in the bottom left corner. This is the sublogic 
uh, flight simulator and for the Commodore 64 this is using a Commodore 64 emulator you can see that the dash is a bit different see it doesn't have that curve these are pretty much you know these are on the same spot but this here is different and that's because this is a Piper this is a Piper Archer not a Cessna um, it's it's funny after you know all these years I just assumed it was a Cessna and it's not uh, we're gonna go ahead and unpause this you can kind of hear the sound there a little bit maybe more than a little bit I think my volume is down that's why I don't hear it very much uh, let's see gonna give it some throttle I think <laughs> I forgot how to do the throttle there it goes okay I got it this is at Champagne Airport there's the fuel this is using scenery disk number nine Okay, where I was going to go to the whoa, going a little too fast here. It's going to taxi us over to that uh, building that we saw, the blue one. Am I still moving? I'm trying to remember how to zoom in and zoom out of the map. That's not it. <laughs> And it's, uh, this is annoying because I was playing the Commodore 64 versions not too long ago, and I've already forgotten. I thought it was plus or minus, but when I was trying that, it, uh, it wound up resetting. taking me back to Megs. We'll just turn ourselves around here. looking out the uh, windows in case you're wondering maybe this one didn't have it maybe it was the Amiga I, I'm pretty sure the Amiga had, I could have sworn the Commodore 64 had it no, I'm pretty sure it had it. And I do have scenery disk number 9 loaded up on it. I do know that. I double checked it. Gotta love this. We're playing 
We're playing two different flight simulators at the same time. <laughs> Maybe we could have a flight simulator challenge where we're sitting there flying like three different ones or something. Because technically, you know, I've, I'm using um, I'm using the uh, DFEND D F E N D front end for DOSBox to play Flight Simulator Two because it was the only way to get this uh, the scenery discs to work. And then we could open up the Commodore 64, the Amiga, <laughs> two different emulators, and then another DOS box to have like Flight Simulator 3 or 4 on there. <laughs> That building's not here. Huh. Either that or it's back this direction. Oh, look, the sun's coming up. I mean, on Microsoft Flight Simulator. <laughs> It does look like there's a blue building over here, though. Right there. Right here. Let's move up there. It's like it's hard to see because it's like the same color as the sky. Sounds like a helicopter. I think that build I think that's it. I think that's the building, but it doesn't have any writing on it either. That's hard to see though. <laughs> because it it blends in right with that. Um if I go ahead and let's change the the time. Notice how this is the same? Very close to the same. Make that two. Well, oh, did that put us on the runway? Man, the Commodore sixty four does that too. So I could go into the um, settings and then it just kind of moves me someplace else. So yeah, we're now we're on the runway. Okay, that was not what I wanted to do. I'm not even sure which runway we're on. There's the building. 
so yeah so that blue building is here but I don't think there was any writing on it either I don't know but we're gonna drive there This is our building. It has nothing on it. Yeah, we can drive through it. It doesn't crash, apparently. Okay, well. <laughs> so it's there. It just doesn't have uh, what it's uh, called. But on the Amiga version, there was definitely something written on there. Look at this. We are... Right at 300 there, do you see that? It's centered. Cool. We are going directly to Puriar now. That's Bloomington right there. So we're just now passing Bloomington. Got about 25 more minutes until daylight, and I think we will probably land before then. I think it's funny how the instruction manuals of both Microsoft Flight Simulator and Sublogic Flight Simulator talk about how we tried to make this uh, run as accurate as possible to a Cessna or run as accurate as possible to a Piper Archer. And quite frankly, both of them play like almost alike. I mean, if you can play this one, you can play the Commodore 64 version. If you can play the Commodore 64 version, you can play this one. Uh, you have to just get used to different keys because the Commodore 64 did not have a numerical keypad. And so in order to do your airlines and elevators and stuff, it was in the smack dab middle of the keyboard. So like G was center and then to the left and the right. So like the F key was going left and H key was going right. T was going down and B was going up and your elevator trims you know were just think of your numerical keypad but put it smack in the middle of a regular keyboard and you know basically the the G key is your 5 key and then uh, look around that G key and you can see what the other <laughs> what the other ones would have been uh, the funny thing is that <clears throat> the Y and the N were actually the flaps 
throttle up and throttle down was like the semicolon and the apostrophe is what those were. But yeah, I mean, once you get that out of the way, you can actually fly either one. Um, the technique is, is the same. A key here. Okay. Just want to make sure the altimeter doesn't, you know, like change on us or something. You know, with the coloring, it's funny how they pick uh, the red and the blue. This is like, I wonder if you could filter this out pretty good with um, like 3D glasses, the old style 3D glasses. And it will look like three dimensional or something. But you gotta like how the buttons here are kind of popped up a little ways. They got like a shadow right there. Look at it long enough and it's kind of like, ooh, this is kind of popping out of the screen here. Yeah, this is pretty realistic. <laughs> Twenty-seven miles ahead. That's probably Peoria right up there. If you remember when we were flying, when we left Champagne, we saw uh, like some square block or something. We're like, oh, I don't know what that is. Um, I think that was this right here, Mahomet. That's Mahomet. If I'm saying that right now. Yeah, that's a T there. Yeah, so here's Champagne and I don't know, we weren't following this yeah, we were, that's right. This is the highway that we're following, and I think that's what it was. I think it was Mahomet. There's good old Bloomington right there. And there's Peoria. Oh, we'll see if Morton's in here somewhere. We might have a little bit of a, I don't know, polygon somewhere that represents uh, Morton. Here's the river. That's Peoria, all right. That's the river that goes through it. And that river, well, it's Peoria Lake. That's pretty much it. It's just, it's Peoria Lake. Uh, the Illinois River is south of that and kind of goes into Peoria Lake.
much behind us anymore. I don't think we have Morton on this one. Yeah, look at that. Now we're beginning to see the Illinois River over there to the left. We're 20.9 miles away from the Vor, which is just a little bit further from the airport. We should have some ATAs by now. I think I need to move it up and then back down again. Okay, maybe not. 126.10, <laughs> that should be correct. Peoria, Peoria, 126.1, yep. Well, that's what it is on the Commerce 64, but... Is it that way on the PC? Maybe the PC uh, scenery just doesn't have an ATIS for Peoria. is actually cool to see. I've seen this on the other simulators and it's just kind of cool seeing this on Flight Simulator 2 as far as Peoria is concerned. And there's some very interesting things about Peoria um, like Richard Pryor was from Peoria and they have a statue of him that dedicates uh, his life um, so if you want to learn some stuff about Peoria, um, check out the X-Plane video that I did of Champagne to Peoria. There we go. Greater Peoria information, Charlie, 1100 Zulu, weather, visibility 10, temperature 50, wind 0, altimeter, they all say 29.95, landing, departing, runway 4. Charlie! Hey, and there's our airport. We can see it. Gray. <laughs> That's because I changed the, uh, the comm radio just as it was... <laughs> Well, we landed on runway 4 with the other simulator, so we'll do the same thing here. See that? We can see the lake a little bit more. Little Peoria Lake. I tell you, I, I was thinking of Han Solo here for a moment, where he's like, it may not look like much, but she's got it where it counts, kid. <laughs> and I was just thinking, you know, the flight simulator too, it may not look like much, but it has it where it counts, right? I mean, the airport, uh, or the cities, I mean, you can fly from the city in city, you know, it, uh, doesn't give you a whole lot to look like, but it's got it where it counts, you know? It's um, some 
some of the basic things that are here, like the the interstates and the the river. You know, just a gray area for the uh, city. It's all there. Thirteen miles away. I think we need to start our descent and get our landing gear down. Take a look at the, the lake there. Now once we cross the river, we can turn back in the direction of the airport again. You can see this right here. I think is runway four. So that's the one we're going to be landing on right over here, going that way. Ten point nine miles. Uh, I'm going to drop a thing of flaps here. That was F six for one degree of flaps. Get ourselves slowed down. use my elevator tram as well. I think I'm going to level off here at maybe 2,500. Can it give us a little bit of uh, a little bit of altitude so that way we can see the runway and be able to line up with it. get a good look at the Illinois River there. Pretty cool, huh? There's the lake. And we saw that on the, uh, the actual map, too. Once again, I'll just show that to you here real quick. Here it is, Peoria Lake. Peoria's right here, and the Illinois River comes out this way. there yet as far as turning. We're getting there.
airport seems pretty close though. So we can go ahead and use our map here and just take a look. There we go. Yeah, so I think we can probably start turning here pretty soon. But yeah, if you wanted to zoom out and take a look, oops, can't see nothing there. So yeah, just just like on the map, on the actual map, you can see Peoria. Judging from the blue and the black, I would say that this has got taxiways. And I'd say we're pretty close to the airport also. We're going to go ahead and make a turn here. Might be a little bit quiet here, but I'm also concentrating. <laughs> Tell you what, if you can fly this and get yourself lined up, it seems a lot easier on the later simulators. <laughs> since the uh, since uh, the pixels aren't you know so big and the lines aren't so jagged, it's actually easier to make out the runways and line up with them. there. Looks like we are lined up. We'll start powering down here. Use our rudder here to move over to the right. Daylight will be hitting here pretty soon, so I guess it will be daylight by the time we land. The 
here it is, runway four. You can just make out the four there. There it is, you can see it. Get ourselves a little bit of a flare going. Watch our speed, watch our descent. Don't crash. Got it! Cut the power off. Flaps all the way up. Got ourselves braked here. Very good. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the map here and see what it is we're looking at. Oh, we got fuel right over there to the left of us so we'll go ahead and turn around head on that ramp and head right over there let's see there it is daytime Daytime once again. Yay for daytime. What is this in green? I think the fuel box in this one is green. The the F for fuel. Usually it's what white. This one's green. See again, it's one of those interesting things. The fact that we're flying the same flight on the different flight simulators, we're seeing things that are a little bit different on each one. I do think I'm having more fun with the Microsoft Flight Simulator than I am the Commodore 64 one. But we are going to get to some areas where the airports aren't on this scenery disk when they were on the Commodore 64, so that's going to be a little annoying. Green fuel, so I guess this is like environmental friendly, is that what this is? We got environmental friendly fuel for our Cessna. filled up. Go and power things off. Magneto's M1. That shuts everything off. So, you know, I just, I don't know why this wasn't blatantly obvious to me, but on the Commodore 64, there's no landing gear. Um, I don't think there's a landing gear. Uh, I like keep wanting there to be landing gear, but I don't think there is. But there's definitely landing gear on this one, on the Cessna. Um, and I just remember when I had the ability to raise the landing gear, I'm like, oh, this is cool. Um, but yeah, it's definitely here on this one. It's, it's, uh, yeah, I don't think it's on the Commerce 64 one. You'd, you'd think I'd have this memorized by now with as much as I've been playing it, but. Uh, anyway, we're here. 
at Peoria, Illinois, using Scenery Disc number nine. So the fun will continue as we continue to fly in this area of the Scenery Disc. Um, if you want a preview of things to come, just check out the other simulators and the world tour with them, and you'll know exactly where we'll be going. Um, there will be a point, though, uh, where some of those airports aren't going to exist, uh, but we'll talk about that when we get up there. Uh, and, uh, until then, uh, be sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell, so that way you will know when a new video is uploaded to this channel. There's all kinds of videos that I work on, not just Flight Simulator. Uh, most of them are Flight Simulator, <laughs> but I, I work on other stuff too. So thanks for joining me, and I will see you on the next leg of our journey. Mm -hmm.